Hello everyone, welcome to Nana's Tiny Kitchen. Um, today we're going to do something that I think you're going to like. When I was a kid we used to love it. It's a bacon cheeseburger meatloaf. Okay, and we're just going to kick it up a little bit of a notch and have a little bit of a surprise that's coming, that's an added ingredient that I just thought of the other day. But to, just to give you a little background, when we were kids, you know, you used to go to your friend's house and sometimes you'd go for supper and uh, they'd say, well, what are you having? Oh, you don't want to come over tonight because my mom is making meatloaf. And it was one of those things that it was like, Ugh! you know. But in my house, when my mother made meatloaf, she always took it to another level. She would stuff it with sauce and mozzarella. She would stuff it with bacon and cheese, all different kinds of cheese. I mean, she would make it so awesome that when we had meatloaf, it was like, okay, we're having meatloaf. Yay. All right. So I'm going to show you how to put this together. First, we're going to start with our breadcrumbs. And if you've seen any of my other videos before, I do not buy store-bought breadcrumbs. And when I do something that a breadcrumb is a ingredient in it, not on it, I use fresh bread. Now this is uh, two slices of sourdough bread. I buy the whole loaf and I stick it in the freezer. And when I need to make toasted breadcrumbs, I do the same thing, only I put them on a tray, 375 for a couple of minutes and I have fresh breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna put my breadcrumbs, my bread right in here and I'm going to add my ingredients to season the breadcrumbs. I have some black pepper. I better put my glasses on because I really can't see. Yay, there you go. I have a little bit of parsley. Let me take this off. This is parsley from my friend's garden. I'm actually using an old herb container. So I'm going to give it a crush. Crush it up a little. Probably about a quarter teaspoon. I have a little bit of oregano. Probably about a quarter teaspoon. I have one. Oh, no, I'm going to use this one. This is a fairly medium sized clove of garlic, so I'm just going to throw that right in there. Some salt. Some onion powder. And I'm going to give this a couple of seconds. I'm going to hit this a couple of seconds, I should say. Grind everything up. For a second there, I kept hearing that garlic bouncing around. No longer bouncing. Okay. Now, I'm going to give this a taste to see if I had, have to add any more seasonings. No, that's really good. Okay. Take this out. And in here, you know, traditional meatloaf, you usually use the pork, the lamb, the beef. But this one, we're only using beef. I have a pound of ground beef and one large egg. I'm going to put our breadcrumbs right in there. And the breadcrumbs are going to help hold it together. Now I have about a tablespoon and a half of Worcestershire sauce. Beef loves Worcestershire sauce. And let me see. I'm going to rinse my hands and get right in there and mix this up. All right, now it's all mixed together. All the ingredients incorporated. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on this pan and flatten it out. I saw this on a TV show not too long ago. Something similar to this. And it was like the new thing. And I said, no, it isn't. My mom's been doing this for a long time. That's how come our meatloaf was so much different. Okay, now that I got it nice and flat, 
They're there, nice and flat. Now we're going to start adding our ingredients. We have cheese. Now you can use any cheese you want. This is American cheese. You could use cheddar cheese. You could use uh, Monterey Jack. You know what? I think I'm gonna grab another couple of pieces of cheese. All right, I put another couple of pieces of cheese on there. And now we're gonna add our cooked bacon. six slices of bacon here. You can go more or less. It's whatever you want. And now, <laughs> this is where we kick it up a notch. Caramelized onions, which I made earlier today. So I'm just going to sprinkle those on the inside. Who doesn't like caramelized onions on a bacon cheeseburger? Really? We just hit this one out of the park. The sweetness and the deliciousness of the caramelized onions. Oh my goodness. I'm such a foodie. Okay, let me rinse my hands off. <laughs> I can't help myself. All right, now the oven is heating up at 350 degrees. I got my meatloaf pan here, and what I'm going to do next is you take your favorite barbecue sauce. You can make your own barbecue sauce if you want to. I buy the store-bought one. I have a particular one that I really like, but I'm not going to tell you until they start paying me uh, to tell you. Anyway, you put this. Oh. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. Look at all this. This is fantastic. Anyway, I'm going to take this and turn it sideways. Get the sleeves rolled up. Now I'm going to start rolling it. I'm going to roll it towards me. And if there are any holes, you just fill them in with your hands. Spread the meat out. You're almost like lifting it up a little bit as you're rolling. Lift it up a little and roll. Tuck the sides, tuck the sides. Stuff's going to come out. That's okay. One more time for good luck. And you see the cheese is poking through the top here. I don't know if you could see that right here. So I'm just going to push it down and get my meat right over. Get it away from the edge. Come on, you. Form our nice meatloaf. Now I'm going to take this, seam is down, put it right into our pan. Rinse my hands off again. And now I'm going to take some more barbecue sauce and I'm going to pour it over the top. And just let it drip down. And this is going to go into the oven for about 40, 45 minutes on 350. I'll see you soon. All right, there you go. In the meantime, I have a pot back here, which I have potatoes, because I'm going to make some smashed taters. This is just potatoes uh, cut up, and I put a little salt in the water. Potatoes love salt, remember that. And about 20 minutes into the cook time here, then I'm going to start my potatoes. So pretty much everything is going to be done at the same time. All right, uh, it's kitchen timer. I'm going to set it for... 20 minutes at first and then I know when that goes off to add another 25 minutes and then we have our meatloaf should be perfectly cooked. I recommend checking it after about 30-35 minutes. 
when you start to see everything start oozing out of it, then you know you're getting close to it being done. And a nice crust forming on the top. Yep. And I thought I had in my freezer some frozen corn, but I didn't. I had vacuum sealed corn that we had gotten at a farm that's down the road from us um, in the husks. So I was like, okay, I don't have loose frozen corn niblet thingies. So I'm just going to defrost two of these and I'll get the corn off of that because I'm going to do some southwestern corn. Southwestern corn is either frozen, you know, frozen corn, the niblets, and you take some red peppers, onions. If you want to kick it up a notch, you can slice up a jalapeno if you want it hot. I don't want this hot. Well, I may add the red chili flakes because, you know, I just can't help myself. So, when we come back, I'm going to start on this. We're going to check that meatloaf and see where we are. Okay, the meatloaf is still in the oven. I actually had to adjust the time. In my uh, description of the video, on the bottom, I will put total cook time and temperature to make it easier for you. Um, but I did add another 15 minutes to that 45 minutes, so it's probably an hour and five minutes. But I got my potatoes, I strained them out, I mashed them up, and I'm gonna add my ingredients to make my smashed. I'm gonna add some butter. Don't be cheap. This is not Weight Watchers. Okay. Now I'm going to add a little bit of salt. A little bit of garlic powder. Not too much. Maybe about, maybe a quarter teaspoon, a little bit less. And some light cream. I'm going to start fluffing these up. In the meantime, in this pan right here, I put some olive oil and a little bit of, of butter, and I'm going to start sauteing my onions and my peppers for the corn. And here's the corn that I took off of the cob. That's quite a bit for two cobs. Not bad. Alright, now I'm going to start this. Oops. Hello. Okay, we need more cream. The garlic, a little bit of garlic powder and the cream makes such an awesome mashed potato. You will not be disappointed. I like to use the hand mixer for this because it gets a nice and fluffy. You'll know when you get them the right texture. And I bought one of those potato ricers probably about 10 years ago and I think I used it once. It was such a hassle, one potato at a time. I'm like, are you kidding me? I don't have that kind of time. Okay, let's give this a little taste. Mmm, that's really good. Okay, just the perfect amount of salt. We want the onions to sweat out a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit of salt to this. And if you want to add some chili flakes, I'm going to because I like it on everything or in everything. Some black pepper. And again, a little bit of garlic powder. Let me get a stirrer. Oh, I can smell that. It smells so good. And then 
our corn right in there. I, I can't eat corn any other way but like this. Ever since I started doing this, I cannot eat it any other way. It just takes it up to a whole new level. Okay, I'm gonna let that cook for a little bit. Make sure our potatoes are good. I'm gonna add a little bit more cream. Oops, here we go again with these outlets. Come on, you. Oh, does not wanna cooperate. All right, plan B. I'm just gonna use a different plug. Find a little bump here and a little bump there in my mashed potatoes. Okay. Okay. Oh man. Really, guys, you got to make the mashed potatoes like that. I'm telling you, you will not be sorry. All right. Let me get back to this corn. Like I said, you could put a jalapeno in there if you wanted to. You could add green peppers if you want. I like the sweetness of the red pepper with the corn, the sweetness of the corn. I know we have only, we have a few more minutes with this meatloaf, but I just want I just want to take a peek. I want to show you it before I slice it up and start plating. Okay, tell me that's not beautiful. It's gorgeous. Let me just give it the test. A little pound here, a little pound there. Feels like it still has some time to go, so I'm gonna put it back in. And then when I cut back, I'm gonna have it all on a plate. Terrific! Okay, here we go. Ta-da! Just took it out of the oven a couple of minutes ago. I sliced off a couple of slices so I can plate it and show you, but look at that. <gasps> Oozing with cheese, stuffed with bacon and caramelized onions. It should be illegal. And here's what your plate is going to look like. This is my supper tonight. So everyone, listen, you know the drill. Make this, let me know what you think. Please tell me what you did, if you did anything different. Recipes and cooking is all about your imagination and uh, taking something and making it your own, like I did with this recipe. My mom used to always do the bacon and the cheese, and I was just like, light bulb went off, and I said, hmm, what do I like on a cheeseburger? I like caramelized onions. So that's what I did. So next time, we'll think of something else, something else to hit out of the park, but here you go. Your bacon cheeseburger caramelized onion meatloaf. That's what's for supper. Till next time. Ciao, everyone.